expectations. You know, if you're if you, if you know you're going to be writing for really good players, um, you you can you can leave some things at their discretion. And uh, it, you know, if it gets to a situation later where you realize so you need something in there all the time and people are not giving it to you, then you add that articulation in later. But what um, considerations do you use when you when you're writing for a rather small smaller ensemble? Um, as far as the independence that you give each each your orchestrational independence, a lot of times you, I notice you'll be going, but a bop, but a bop, but two guys will be going da da da, and the other one was going ah, and just hitting me, you know. Yeah. So you you got basically they're playing the same thing, but but different different aspects of that same line. Yeah. So they're 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 providing um, rhythmic punches there. Right. Yeah. There. There. Yeah. There's not necessarily a need for everybody to join at that point. Sometimes it's it's really a question of working out how are you going to get all these people to play every single idea you have, and you're going to have to take something from somewhere and and give it to somebody else. Even even sometimes splitting a phrase up between two players so that you can fit everything in. Um, you know, that's that's uh, that's how it goes when you when you're going to write for a smaller ensemble, but it's a great, you know, it's a great challenge. And, uh, I always, you know, welcome the opportunity to do that. Let me show you something that's, uh, completely the opposite of that now. Um, so we can, we can skip to, uh, let me see if I can, okay, here we go. This is a, this is a, a piece I wrote. This is on the continue also on the continuum big band album. Uh, this is a piece I, wrote with the idea in mind that it was going to be playable by a big band, but I also wanted to, it to be playable by my dad's 30-piece brass band. So we have six woodwinds here, if you read along on the score here. Uh, I've got four trumpets, then I've got soprano bugles, alto bugles, mellophone, E-flat flugelhorn, French horns, we got the trombone section, and then baritone bugle, contrabass bugle. So on this score, there are people who transpose to E-flat, B-flat, G, and F. And uh, and then I, I've got the rhythm section down here. So, um, but they're bugles with valves, right? Obviously, the, all valve yeah. bugles, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. looking at the chromaticism. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's impossible. I, I I apologize for the score. Some the way it's looking on the screen is sometimes it's missing. It looks like it's missing the bar lines unless you zoom in. But if I zoom in, you won't be able to see most of what's happening there. So I'm just gonna play. A very small section of this. Uh, oh, by the way, to this 30-piece instrumentation, I later decided to add as an overdub contrabass sax. Now that's an octave below the baritone. So now that means the baritone is normally the lowest member of the sax family in a big band. is is the third lowest now. I've got the baritone and the bass sax and contrabass sax below it. And uh, just listen for it on the low end there. I think you'll be able to hear it. This is called step up. what a 32 piece big band sounds like I remember one time we were at a festival and um, the uh, the announcer said uh, well the, the name of this band is called the Claire Fisher Jazz Corps that's C-O-R-P-S you know as in drum and bugle corps somebody asked me if it was a big band and of course you saw you know 28 horn players besides the rhythm section on stage so it, it was really fun it's a lot of work it takes a lot of brain energy reading a score like that and you know cueing all the different players so i, I usually when we're going to do a gig with that band I, I eat right before we start 
and I eat as soon as we're done because it's just, you know, I'm, the brain is just using up lots of calories. Uh, questions about anything? Anyone want to just uh, turn their mic on and uh, talk, say something? Kevin, anyone? Don't be shy. Jim? Dan Ferguson? Is there a bass bugle? A contrabass bugle. Contrabass yes. bugle? Yes. Is is there somebody in town that has that? Uh, actually, my dad bought it, and uh, we lend it out to the players. I, I just need, I, you know, as long as I've got a really good tuba player that's uh, done some drum and bugle core work, uh -huh. he can uh, pick that instrument up and um, use it. You know, and, I, and 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 it doesn't it doesn't just have to be in this type of situation. You know, I I've, I've used contrabass bugle on my uh, on my forty five piece orchestra. For uh, Michael Jackson's "This Is It," you know, there was besides strings, I, uh, you know, I, I had uh, contrabass, bugle, um, baritone, horn, uh, piccolo, trumpet, alto flute. I mean, all those colors are just beautiful to use, yeah. and uh, it's just a question of you know knowing when and how you can use them, and and just having you know having it be the right time, at the, the right place at the right time.